a lot more over the next few years, and then eventually get into multifamily apartments. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Subra? No problem. Thank you. Uh, Subra, if you want to do a quick intro, if you can hear us, you're muted. Maybe this next guy. Yeah. Um, uh, Hamad, did I say your name right? If you can hear us. Hey, uh, Hamad, sorry, I've got a uh, kid crying in the back here. If you guys right. can bear with me for a second. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, so I'm basically, I used to be, uh, so I'm Canadian, moved over here to Detroit. Um, I have some single family experience back there, but I'm fully diving into multifamily and just uh, setting up the business there. But I'm going to be looking at investing more like in southern states like Texas, um, um, Carolinas, Arizona, etc. So I'm just looking to connect with people in the area for now here as well. Awesome. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Subra, we're able to uh, do a quick intro. If not, just whenever you get a chance. All right. So I guess we can just get started. Um, we didn't technically have a presenter today. Um, we kind of were going to talk about our deals, and then Brandon was going to talk about his deal, just because it's kind of a little interesting um, what he's got going on and some of the stuff that we were doing. Um, I think probably for next meeting, hopefully you can just have it in person, but I'd like to get like a lender, a commercial lender to come speak, um, just so that way everyone can kind of know what to expect um, going into um, commercial lender and kind of know what files to have ready because they do ask for a stack of stuff and uh, kind of what to expect and kind of how that whole process works. So. Um, I'm working on that for next month. Hopefully, like I said, we can do it in person. I'm gonna try to see if we can get like a venue or something. Um, because the Troy Community Center is still closed. So um I guess without further ado, I'll let Brandon kind of tell you what kind of they got going on. And uh hey, what's going on, guys? So uh me and my private partner John Tio's went in before. Um we bought a three unit place in Farmington Hills. Um, we paid cash for it, 72,000. Um, it was bank owned pretty much. We did no inspection period or anything, just we kind of knew what we were getting into. Uh, the walkthroughs, we knew that it was gonna need some major renovations. Uh, the floor was like crooked in one of the units and we knew that was gonna be an issue. Um, but we thought like, you know, the furnaces and stuff looked like they were in pretty good shape. The roof looked like it was in decent shape, didn't need to be replaced. Uh, we just thought it was gonna need, you know, some drywall, new kitchens, new bathrooms, new flooring, whatever. <clears throat> well, we get the place and then uh, we start doing the demo on it, ripping, we pretty much ripped every piece of drywall off. The ceiling was six layers, literally six layers deep, not just like exaggeration, it was, it was crazy. Um, we gained almost a foot in one unit of ceiling space. <laughs> yeah. So ripping this down, rip down some of the drywall against the exterior walls. Now the exterior walls, um, the two by fours are rotted out. So now we have to get like the frame of the house replaced. And then looking up now, the roof is, it was, the water is coming through the roof. So now we need a new roof. And <clears throat> then we, dig a little more into it and now we need to do probably some foundation work because it's sitting on a slab and it has like a crawl space but some of the joists are messed up and the house is kind of starting to sink a little bit but it just goes to show is like we knew we we're gonna have a big project and it pretty much turned into like everything you can possibly do to a house we're gonna have to do to this place from all new electric all new plumbing all new roof all new floors all new drywall a new roof some siding repair now, exterior wall repair. So, um, you building the house. <laughs> we're building a house, dude. That's what it come down to. But it's kind of good because now we're gonna learn how to like we're learning a ton, like how to price things. We're trying, we're starting to build a network as far as like contractors for different things. 
So it is good, and we still have room where we think we're going to make out on the end. So when we first priced it out, we were thinking it was going to be between um, 15000 and 20000 a unit, right? So that was anywhere from forty five to 60000 plus the seventy two, So it puts us at 132000 total all in. So that leaves us pretty good because based on comps in the area and the area itself being next to Beaumont, we can market to like um, – traveling nurses and stuff and it's going to be and they're starting to do a lot of flips in the neighborhood so the prices are definitely going up in the in the neighborhood um good access to highways to the park right next door so i see a low b prime neighborhood is what i'd probably value it at if we're going to do like that abc scale um so we're thinking right now anywhere from like depending to see what the market does like there's no way we're going to get it done before november so like 260 ish maybe the 300 if we're lucky um i know it's a big gap but this place is going to be brand new at the end of the day right so we still have room to play so now we're guesstimating it's going to cost about 120,000 all in plus our 72 it's going to put us at 193 or 192 mouse and menace still leaves us a little room we could pull out some cash do another one or uh and rent it or we could just kind of maybe sell it take the profits and, and push into something because we like to eventually get into something bigger. Um, maybe like a 12 unit or those six units and seven units you guys are grabbing. It's a pretty good size too. So um, the biggest problem we're seeing is like contractors, right? I mean, I know everyone says it, but you don't really realize until you jump into it and they don't show or they don't call you back or so we're trying to hand a dude a hundred thousand dollar handoff, you know, to fix this place and they don't, it's amazing to me that they don't want it. They'll come in and someone will be like, oh, you know, it's, it needs a lot of work. I'm like, yeah, I know. But like these guys, are getting like, they're like picky and they only want, you know, to work in like Bloomfield Hills and help the old lady, you know, put vinyl flooring down and then charge her like $15,000 or whatever. But so investor friendly contractors are definitely hard to find. Reliable contractors are definitely hard to find. So, I mean, it could be the perfect business. If you just do what you say you're gonna do and show up, you can make a lot of money in the contracting business. But I was able to, um, we got, we're gonna use you guys as roofers. So Keo gave me some good, some good contacts. The HVAC guy is awesome. Using Andy? Yeah, Andy's gonna do the roof. He came in with a pretty good quote. He's knowledgeable. You can just tell that he knows what he's doing. He is a boss. I gotta yeah. start getting commission off all these dudes because I keep getting them all this work. I, I need to start getting a cut out of them. I know. <laughs> Or just charge people uh, contractor referrals. Like you want, you want a plumber that's fifty bucks, dude. <laughs> so um, right now we're trying to find someone to fix the foundation because you know that's where it's all going to start. So we're not even exactly how much work needs to be done. If it's a lot, or it's a little. I don't think it's going to be a lot. But you, I mean, T O N A. You guys walk the house. You guys know how crooked that one floor was. I wish I had pictures. But after we ripped up like the sixth layer of the floor, it wasn't as crooked. So. <laughs> but the bathroom so pretty much any place where water was being ran doesn't have a floor anymore because they just mickey moused it so much over the years and it just pretty much rotted everything out so so there were six layers how many layers of ceiling were there there was like six layers seven layers of ceiling and then the floor had a bunch too that's crazy and yeah so like the floor on they slapped on a, roof, a ceiling <laughs> i couldn't even believe it it's it's insane how much um, they just stacked everything on top of each other. That, that one unit, the, the the last ceiling they put on, it was actually plywood, wasn't it? And they just like skim coated it? it just, yeah. And what like, they did, so not only that, they did, so there was windows. So all the windows you've seen were replacement windows, but they never took out the old windows. Yeah. They just plywood on them and then skim coated it. Yeah. So we kind of rip off this wall and we're hitting like plywood. And then after we take out the rest of the wall, we could see it, but they did it on, they left every other single window. So there's double the amount of windows in there yeah. and just some of them are plywood. That's crazy. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but like I said, it's a really good learning thing. Cause now pretty much the next projects I have, I'm going to be able to walk through and pretty much immediately price stuff out just from talking to all these different contractors um, you start to learn like how much stuff costs, how they're, how they're, how they're pricing it. Like some people do it by the square foot. Some people do it by the job. 
so these are all lessons that you got to learn just by kind of jumping in and everyone I feel wants to, you know, listen to the magic podcast, or read the magic book or have a buddy who is the best and he tells them how to do it. Um, but the really the best thing to do is just jump in, you know, Hey, if we break even on this, I'll, I'll be happy with it because, uh, at the end of the day, we're learning how to do it, building connections, and it's, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, that place should get pretty good rents anyway, right? I mean, especially being brand new, like, with all that. Yeah, so we're guessing, we're hoping um, anywhere from 800 to 1,000 a unit. They're only one bed, one bath, but it's going to be brand new. And we're really going to try to get some of that hospital staff in because it's a quarter mile from that Beaumont. So um, we'll see. But if, if we get to 1,000, we'll probably keep it. You know, just because it's going to be bringing in good money, and yeah. just pull and pull the money out of it, and plus that will help it value a little higher. Then we can pull even more out. So there's a lot of industry out that way. I'm trying to look because I. The funny thing is that we looked at that deal too, and we bet on it too, and I took a video while we walked through it. Um, I just don't remember when did you guys actually buy it. Do you remember like the date? Yeah, we closed uh July. Like, like the like, offer. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like the end last week of June. Yeah, I'd say June's probably about right. June, okay. I think I took a video of walkthrough through it, right? Yeah, because Nicole commented like, hey, we, we saw that thing too, right? Yeah, so we looked at it twice. And um, the first time I was like, nah, nah, I'm good. And then the second time we walked back through it and I was kind of like, you know, it's not that bad. You know, and then whatever. Uh, we found pretty much anything that can go wrong, can go wrong. Yeah. Okay, so June 8th, it's, if you scroll down on my Facebook, if you go all the way to like 100, I don't know if I can, sh I might be able to share it. Um, if you I go to the Instagram page, the Bravo Actual Project, that's us, and you can act as actually a real-time video of us ripping this place apart. So we have like a little Instagram, we document it because it's never a dull moment in that place so yeah so you guys can check that out and then go on my facebook page and video 100 you got to scroll down quite a bit i did a video walkthrough and me and nate walked it um and as you can tell by what brandon said like our rehab we thought it was going to be like 15 to 20 a door right and obviously we were way off that because like Brandon said, they found a whole bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a blessing in disguise, man, because if we did just go in there and try to clean it up or whatever, right, and we didn't rip all the walls down, like we would have, there would have been so many problems that wouldn't be addressed that would come up down the road and they would have been a bigger problem. Yeah. Um, so it's just like the kind of thing is like, for me, it's like, well, renter do I want to be? You know what I mean? I, if you expect the tenants to pay top dollar, and treat your stuff with respect like you have to treat it with respect as well so i don't want them you know water pouring in and then living there and now i gotta rip the walls off and the roof's hanging off and i'm trying to have people in there and then if they see the water leak and they may not tell you and then um they'll just be like this place sucks and they'll start ripping it up even more you know what i mean because of like so yeah. i've seen that before in some of my other rentals and uh yeah it's a slippery slope Yep, that is uh, that's a great point. So I, I found the video and I dropped it into our group, um, into the actual event itself. So you guys can actually just go and watch it. And then Brandon, I'm sure, can drop his uh, yeah, I'll do it right that now. Instagram in there too. So it makes it easy enough to uh, um, see. And speak of the devil, Andy joined. Right on time. So, Ann, you want to tell us what uh, what you do? Do a quick intro. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm early in the investing stages, trying to get my start. I've been dealing with this neighbor for a hot minute, but um, I do roofing as a full time second gig. Um, been doing that for a lot of years trying to get that off the ground and running so that's eating up a lot of my time right now kind of hindering my my real estate investing some kind of torn on whether i want to stick with it or not 
but uh yeah i'm trying to get rolling on my neighbor's house he passed away a year ago and uh i finally tried to get the uh appraisal scheduled so uh he picked the one day i'm out of town this week and <laughs> so i gotta try and redo that he wants to do it eight o'clock in the morning but i work two jobs so that's not practical either so well you're getting there brandon was just telling us how uh you quoted his roof and like then you joined right after i was like oh look it's perfect <laughs> yeah the farmington yeah. yeah man so i was actually gonna text you today because oh, we're in the chat so we're gonna we're getting all that you know the exterior walls and like the foundation foundation issues yep so we've been struggling to find a contractor that like shows up or is reliable but uh i think we got a beat on one this week so um that's gonna be a little delayed, but we'll still have you come do it when it's ready. I'll let you know. Hopefully before uh, November. Yeah, just keep me posted, man. I've got, I've got them pouring in right now. So the quicker you can get uh, me an idea, I can get you penciled in anyway. All right. Yeah, I'll let you know as, as soon as we know. Hopefully next week. Okay. So cool. Get a roofer, and he can help you guys out. Um, and then do you want to talk about our six and our seven unit, Nate? Yeah. Yeah, we can. All right. Um, which one do you want to talk about first? The six unit, probably. All right. Seven Make, unit's kind of crazy. Yeah, seven unit. <laughs> like, for real, it's like, it's kind of like what brand, it's almost like overwhelming, but at the same time, it's like, like if Jerry, I don't know, does Jerry Springer still go on TV? I believe, uh, you know, I don't know. Because I think if they, they do, we, like, we have the perfect stars. I think it's Maury Povich now. I think, Jerry, I think Jerry was more, like, active, so it was more fun. But, um, yeah, we'll talk. Uh, four, two, five, nine. I actually pull up um, some pictures of it so you guys can actually see what we're talking about. And why is this not working? But yeah, so we picked this up. It was an MLS deal. And I think the one and only reason we got it was I'm literally, I have like, I'm always looking on MLS for stuff, right? And I truly believe that the only reason we got it was, when, when did we get this under contract? It was like the 4th of July, right? Yeah, like Something. Sunday of the 4th of July, so whatever date that is yeah so like it came on the market on thursday we saw it friday we saw it friday and put in the offer friday yeah. and then we got it approved on sunday so i think that the only reason we literally got this thing was just for the fact that we were paying attention and everyone else was probably like on their way up north right um yeah. because the agent literally told me when we were closing, he's like, man, we it was crazy. Just so you guys know, he's like, I had a crazy amount of people nonstop reaching out to me, trying to like figure out, you know, if you guys are closing or what's going on. Um, That's crazy though. Like whenever I submit offers on the MLS, they always wait like a freaking week for everyone to see it. Cause yeah. I'm just like you, I see it the same day within probably an hour or two and boom, offer submit. Or sometimes I just submit the offer and don't even go there. Yeah, we don't we don't play those. Uh, I think the guy liked us too. <laughs> maybe he liked us. I don't know. He was a little weird. But so like the cool thing out of this deal, um, after we saw it, after we closed on it, the guy's like, "Hey, I might have a package of like duplexes that um, I can show you guys." Um, so he's working on a package of duplexes. I don't know how many or how big or small it is, but there's definitely a package of duplexes. So I'm super pumped for it. Um, but I'll just show you. So this is like the original listing. You can see it was listed for two eighty nine nine. Um, I don't know. Did you want to talk on this one or I, whatever you want? I can. I don't mind. All right. It doesn't matter. All right. Um, I, I'll just go since yeah. I got it up. Um, yep. We put in two offers. So I put in a cash offer at two. You remember how much the cash offer was? It was like two thirty five or two forty. Yeah. We had a cash offer, 245, or somewhere in that range, 240-ish, yeah. um, with 
a quick closing or 265 finance. Um, they obviously took the 265 finance. So you can see here's the property. Um, it's between Gratiot Ave and Bear, whatever street this is. The cool wow. thing is if you zoom out, this right here is Lake St. Clair. Oh, uh, not Lake St. Clair, no, Lake, um, Lake Huron. 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 Yeah. Okay. All the houses, obviously they're all, sorry, it's, my Zoom's not working. These are all like waterfront properties and they're all worth like, yeah, I'd say bottom, bottom five, line. seven and up. Yeah. Um, all the neighboring houses are worth crazy money. So that's where we saw it and we're like, okay, if you walk out of this property, you can look between these two houses and see the water. So it's technically water views, right? Yeah. And the <laughs> other side's cool too. Show them the other side. They got like the golf course over there. The other side is a huge golf course right here. Um, so it's just a super, super great area. So if you do the math, we got it for 265, you back out the commission, um, it's six units. So we got it 40, 44 a unit without, yeah, 40, yeah. 44, a unit, I think. 44 a unit, the other cool things. So it's a three unit in the middle right here. We have like a laundry room. It's a six unit. What'd I say? Three. My bad. It. Well, that's because it's half. So yeah, it's yeah. six unit. There's three units over here and three <laughs> units over here. That's why I said three unit. <laughs> um, but each unit has their own little carport here. And then there's storage on this side of the carport for these three units and storage in here um, in the laundry, laundry room, room yeah. for the other three units. Um, the units are actually pretty decent size. So it's a brick building. Um, so that's the carport on the other, on the Gratiot side. And they all have like a little backyard, which is also really sweet. And they have these bushes and these fences. So it's, they're pretty private, which is also a bonus. This is kind of like the entrance way on the other side of the building. Um, there's obviously two doors, right? This would be like, I guess the front door. And then on the back side, you got the back doors. So they're pretty much all think i think one of them had new cabinets but for the most part they're all kind of in this shape they have like the older um, bathrooms in there but they're all really in good shape you know um when we turn these we're just going to reglaze the tile put a new vanity a new toilet in and you know these things are going to look great um this is the first unit and i think this one was probably the most outdated there's actually carpet or carpet we can tell that's carpet teal but there's hardwood floors under all the carpet. So again, when we turn them, we're gonna rip up the hardwood or the carpet and refinish the hardwood floors. And that's the same thing for the um, both bedrooms. Well, one bedroom. So you can see this unit, it has the hardwood flooring throughout. So when we turn them, we're gonna take out the carpet and just have um, you know hardwood floors throughout. Um, and also you can kind of tell it's got like an exposed ceiling, which is pretty cool. It's kind of hard to tell in the pictures, but this is one of the nicer units. The lady like kept it up like really, really nice, super clean. Uh, you can tell her bathroom's a little updated too. They actually, it looks like they tore everything out and, uh, did a bath surround and a bandy and everything. So, um, I think that was that same unit. Um, uh, so there's two boilers. And one boiler is for the heat and the other boiler is for the hot water. So this is like your hot water tank here. And this boiler heats up the water for the hot water tank. So it's super complex, weird system. Um, our plan is since all this is older, we're gonna do like mini splits since none of these units have air conditioning. Um, and what those are, it's pretty much an exterior unit with a like a head is what they call it inside. So they're, we looked at them, they're under $2,000 and that way. So the reason to do that is all these units, we pay the gas for the heat and the water. So by doing that, we pretty much get rid of one of these boilers and everyone's gonna be responsible because everyone pays for electric, right? So since everyone pays for electric, those mini splits, they just run off all electric right it's a heat pump system so that's going to get rid of our gas bill and that's important 
because the main reason is we want to try to get expenses as far down as possible because this isn't Fort Grass yet and their water and sewer expenses are like insane how expensive they are. So by doing that, we can cut costs and pretty much just remove the, this whole hot mess of things, right? Um, Tio, you said all of these are one bedroom, right? <clears throat> yeah, they're one. So they're actually, let me see if I can actually show you. If they're one bedroom and they're smaller square foot, <clears throat> would you consider like a PTAC system where you both have heat and AC all on electrical? That's what the mini split is. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. Um, so I'm going to like a similar name. So you can't really tell in this picture the way they're actually bigger units. These were all originally two bed, one bath units, but they essentially took out. So like this dining room right here used to be a bedroom. So they essentially took out one of the bedrooms and made it into a uh, one bed, one bath. So the units are almost, I think, 660 or 70 square feet. So it's a pretty decent size uh, square footage for a one bed. And I think we're probably just going to keep them all one bed, one baths, um, just because I think the layout's better. And I think we're, most of the people that live in here, there's one family that lives in here, but I think most of them are like elderly people. Um, so I think if we cater to that, kind of group we're going to be better off anyway um another thing that we got to do i don't know if you can see in this top corner over here hide and tuck back there the property's still on fuses so we're going to upgrade the electrical the one lady was telling us that like she can't have a microwave in her kitchen uh <laughs> because she pops fuses when she's cooking right so we can't have that um, i think it was this lady in unit one so um, that's another thing we're going to do and we're going to do the mini split um, as we kind of do that and uh, I guess the the biggest thing is our rents right so right now our rents I think are average at like five do you remember how much these were oh Nate's gone 580 I think it's just under 600 is what the rents were right you remember Nate I yeah, should. sorry. Um, yeah, I think it was five seventy or five eighty or something on average. Um, and we're thinking that we should be able to get rents up to seven fifty at least. Yeah. Um, mostly with the carports, and then we can charge extra for the storage, and um, and the other bonus, and then we'll go to the other property that I really like this thing is if you can tell the slot it's not actually like a double lot right so what we can do and what we're going to try to do is a see if the city will let us split the lot and either one option would be sell it so right here this slot right here that's empty there's actually a house there right now um so we're going to either try to, yeah it was just built um so we're even going to try to do that and you know, just sell the lots to someone that wants to build. Or if they'll let us, we'll see if they can just let us mirror the same exact building with the carports and everything else on this side. Um, so that's another um, thing that we'll try to do. And then you'll have a nice, you know, little common area in the center, which you wouldn't really because everyone's got their little bushes and everything. So, um, but yeah, so that's this property. Um, I'm trying to think, did I miss anything, Nate? Um, I think that was it. All right. Anyone have any questions? I've got a question. Um, when it comes to your uh, rent rates, um, how are you able to go ahead and decide like what's the right number? Because you were saying that right now it's five eighty ish, but you're looking to get it up to seven fifty. How are you able to decide that that's a good rent rate, especially being right by one of the big lakes? Yeah. Um, well, can I take this? Yeah, go for it. Um, so. This property is a little tougher than most because because of where it's at, there's not like a ton of apartments. There are some, but there's not a lot of history on them. Even these tenants have been here for like five years. Some one one's been there for like 10, 10 or 12 years. So there's not like a ton of comps, but usually you can just pull comps nearby and figure it out. Um, 
that 750 actually could be light. We don't actually know, but that I would say is for sure. I have some units nearby, and, and well, Teo does too in Port Huron. Um, but I have some one bedrooms rented for set. Uh, I have one rented for 715, a one bedroom in Port Huron, which like this location is way better, and the unit's way better. Um, yeah. So it is tough. Like we don't know. I mean, it could be 800. Um, it, th this one in particular is tough because if you look, these how like the one that they just built right next door is a 320. It's listed at like 320 grand. Some of mm. these houses like 500, 700 thousand. Mm -hmm. So like the rents are a little skewed on some stuff, but yeah. But normally you can just pull comps within like a half a mile and you have a bunch of apartments that come up. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, that was it. Was a tough one. Yeah, there there are apartments that are like down the street. Some. Yeah, um, we pulled a couple of comps from it, but same thing. There's not a lot that have gone recently because they it seems like they stay full a long time. Yeah, so even here, you the, the house is right here. You can't even see it um, built on Google on Google Earth. Um, but yeah, yeah, the house they built is right here. Yeah. But yeah, anyone got anything else on this one? I should. Um, hi, this is Super Um hey. You guys. Um, I think if you're planning on renovating it, um, you guys should um, try those water conservation techniques. I was listening to this um, this podcast yesterday about um, this group that focuses mainly on water conservation, and I think this would be a a big value add to this project. You guys, I don't know if you've considered it, but yeah, um, yes. So um, they're called the Potty Princess. I know the name's funny. <laughs> But uh, what's the company that we uh, talked to? Do you remember Nate last year? I don't. I, yeah, I've talked to a few. I, I, that one I have written on my in my book, I think. Yeah. So we. Uh, yeah. So obviously, when we're when we do do when we do do when we do these turns on these units, um, we're definitely going to be doing that. Um, one of the ladies has like a commercial farm. <laughs> Not really a commercial farm, but she's got like tomatoes and like all this crazy stuff, right? And all these plants and stuff that she probably waters like nonstop, which is fine. But with how expensive the water is, um, you know, we don't want to be paying for it. Um, so we're definitely going to turn off all the water spigots to the outside and kind of like let her know like, hey, you know, it's fine if you have plants. It's just, I don't think you can really tell here, but the whole side of this was all plants. This right here is all plants. Like she, she goes hard. Right. So mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that's probably a big reason for the water, uh, water bill the way it is. But yeah, we're definitely, when we do the upgrades, we're going to do like the low flow toilets and the low flow, faucets. all the shower heads and all the faucets and everything um, just to help it out. Obviously, it's not going to be huge, but it's still going to, you know, make a dent and it's going to help us on our refinance too. Um, so the cool thing is when we finance this place, the lender that financed it for us, um, most of commercial financing on smaller stuff, they have prepayment penalties. So it's hard to buy something, add value, and then in a year or two kind of do a cash out refi and get some money out. But with the lender that we used, they were able to essentially say that, hey, as long as you guys do the refinance through us, you don't have any prepayment penalties, right? It'll just be a modification to um, the loan that we currently have in place. So that's kind of the, uh, the plan. But yeah, water conservation is definitely going to be something that we're going to try to do along with um you know just is that, is that a limit on what's the minimum that banks would be willing to finance for multifamily units per door like is it forty thousand dollars is it fifty thousand dollars a door is it twenty thousand dollars a door you said to finance yeah um i don't think there's a limit i've never heard of a limit that way but it's all based on like it's debt service coverage you know so Okay. 
like to make it like simple, if, if the rents are like two thousand dollars a month, and after all expenses, you're I don't know, clearing a thousand dollars a month, and you add that up, it, it's basically however much debt that can income can service, and they usually want it to be one point two five or higher mm -hmm. for debt service coverage. So that means one point two five basically means for like every dollar you pay your mortgage, pretty much you have to have an extra twenty five cents you're making above that in like simple terms you know but that's all they care about if that makes sense so the higher that debt service yeah. coverage number is the safer the loan is but they're usually willing to do a dollar like 1.25 1.3 um but so they're they appraising your building based off its income so the more income the higher the value and their ltv if it's 75 percent it'll just the money will increase based on the percentage does okay. that make sense if that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. A quick question for you guys. Well, I got to get off soon to work on some of my uh, schooling, but um, kind of related to kind of not um, for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of capital to do investment. What's a good way to get into uh, real estate investment without like having to save up a bunch of money? Like I've got, like I said, not a lot right now. You got something, Nate? Oh, yeah. I'm at, so I, everything's everything's like different. I, mm -hmm. I I didn't start with a lot of money at all. I think mm -hmm. my first one I had five thousand dollars and I, okay. I raised the money. So you could like partner with someone. You could okay. raise private capital or say you couldn't do any of that or didn't have time to do any of that. If mm -hmm. you could offer like some other type of value, you could like partner on. You just have to like figure out what you could bring to. Okay. investment to try to get on as some sort of equity and there's okay. a lot of ways to do it it just depends i guess mm -hmm. like your personality like your research what you're trying to do mm -hmm. like i said okay. me personally i raised money for my my very first one yeah um it just depends on like i said what what you're comfortable with doing i guess yeah okay i was gonna say kind of like what your skills are yeah. and what because see like that like what nate was saying like let's say that you maybe you find a deal and you can't um raise the money or you don't have any way of raising the money or financing or whatever it is right mm -hmm. you can let's say like be like hey tio like i found this deal um do you want a partner on it and you know obviously if it's a deal mm -hmm. be like you know hey you know i'll talk to nate and be like yeah this makes sense and we can like mm -hmm. raise all the money we can do all that and do the mortgage all that stuff mm -hmm. and obviously for you bringing the deal you could get some sort of stake in it, right? Okay. Percent ownership, you know? So that's yeah. like one way of doing it. Another way would be like, I'm just like throwing stuff out there. Um, like me and Nate, we have a property management company. We're always looking mm -hmm. for people to help us manage our properties, right? So mm -hmm. if you, this also depends on how much time you have. So if you have spare mm -hmm. time, you can be like, hey, you know, I want to learn how to landlord and how to like deal with tenants and all this other stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe you can, you know, add value that way. Okay. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different ways. So it kind of just depends on like what your strengths are. Um, okay. So usually people that don't have that many funds usually have mm -hmm. a little bit more time. You might be mm -hmm. a little different because you do have school. Yeah. Um, but you know, you might have like analytical skills, right? You might be yeah. really good at like analyzing stuff or yeah. you know, whatever your strengths are, you know? Mm -hmm. So like just kind of like figure out like what your strengths are and just go to someone and be like, Hey, you know, these are my strengths. How can we like work together to, you know, make something work beneficially for both parties, you know. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, that's some good information. And in a couple of years, once I get my degree, definitely I'll let you know. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, let's take it easy. Cool, man. Thanks for jumping on. All right. Do we have any other questions on this one? Now we'll go to the fun one. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think there's a better way of doing this other than this, right, Nate? No, oh, yeah, I, that's good. Because I have a bunch of pictures and I have a bunch of stuff like on my phone, but it's not like, uh, um, I guess I could probably figure out a way to share it. Yeah, I and mean, that's good. Just that and like maybe like a street view. Yeah, this one uh, was that we found on MLS too. 
Yeah. And same thing. It popped up. We rolled up on it quick. There was two or three other people that joined in on it or that joined in on it that um, made offers. Kind of made offers on it. Um, so this is like the property right here. It's this, it's a seven unit. It actually also comes with this garage right here. That's probably what, like a four or five car garage. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah. So like he said, this one was listed. We went and saw it. There were like three other offers. Um, yeah, listed at 145. We offered, I think we offered 145 and they said there was three other offers. Then we offered 150 um, cash. So um, no mortgage yet. Um, so this one, like, so I mean, that's, that is actually is really cheap. So I, I have some other properties nearby um, and it's cheaper than what I bought mine for per unit. Um, and I know what they can rent for because I have other properties. So my other one bedroom, I have like a six one at six fifty, one at seven fifteen, whatever. Six fifty does like seven twenty five, um, and they pay all their own utilities in mine. This one, they pay their own electric, but they don't pay their own water. Anyway, this guy has them. This was basically severely mismanaged. Um, the property itself isn't in bad shape. So the guy that owned it, I would say. I mean, I don't know if you agree, but guy that owned it the one good thing he did is like not let the property like fall over like i'm guessing he was there every week fixing stuff but his tenants are nuts <laughs> when he it's says really, severely that's not even a good enough word yeah to like justify how terrible this guy was yeah he's the, probably one of the worst managers i've ever seen and and the reason i'm saying that like i've i've bought much worse units than these like condition and you know you might get bad times because they're they're bad when you get them. But this guy was just putting in terrible tenants, and like I think he had no rules. We, I don't know what you. Teal was there today, and he he got uh, one tenant I think showed him videos of the other tenant getting like knocked out three times in a week. I don't like hit and just stupid stuff. Uh, I don't even know what what all they have going on, but. Like we got a call from the neighbor, like four days after we bought it, Tio got a, a call from a number he didn't know and he answered it. It turned out to be a neighbor, not even across the street, but behind the, uh, the, the apartment across the street, like a house behind that. And he called to say that one of our tenants was outside screaming at the top of her lungs. I don't even know, some crazy stuff. And anyway, we figured out who it was. It's actually the tenant I thought would be the one good tenant. She's she's blind, so I thought we'd have no problems. And anyway, um, so what I thought would be our best tenant, she, she's causing a ruckus over there. But anyway, every single unit has something weird going on. So once we clean it all up, we think the I think the rents right now are what like average four sixty. Yeah, some stupid something old. dumb. Like he has someone in there for like. 385 i think or 400 oh yeah five. yeah something dumb but anyway beyond that like they should be like six to seven and a quarter depending on what they look like um but like i said he was just sticking like when we met him the first time he told us he he stuck in a guy we thought would be a good tenant but then he proceeded to tell us that he like basically picked up a homeless guy and just stuck him in there and then he was like surprised the guy didn't pay him and then like six months later he kicked him out but so basically he's just stuck in all kinds of people yeah so. so that that's like the biggest real issue with the property like when we went and saw it i thought that i thought it was all boiler and i thought the tenant or the landlord paid heat but it wasn't because all the units like nate was saying they all pay their electric and they all have electric baseboard. So the landlord literally pays nothing on their side other than the water, which is actually really sweet, right? Yeah. Um, other than the one unit, that's kind of weird, but we're gonna switch that one to electric um, baseboards as we turn them. Um, the difficult part is there's like, like I said, like a Jerry Springer show in this thing. So like 
everyone has a story and blaming someone else for something else, right? Um, and I'm not gonna go like too hard on in the, the detail because I'm recording this. Uh, but tell me the uh, tell us the worst one. It's only like five people here who are faithful. So <laughs> the worst one. I mean, I don't even think. I mean, the neighbor, um, the neighbor telling us about it. That that was. I was surprised. I was like, why? Why? How? How did you get my number? First of all, um, and then I think he just saw that I was like the selling agent. Um, but yeah, they were just like screaming at the Nate. So this is another apartment building and I'm guessing that this apartment building is mismanaged as much as ours was, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that stems from the issue. The other issue is this is also a rental property that had squatters into it. Um, the person that we bought our six unit managed this one and our six unit, right? So um, there's just not very good management happening in this here area. Um, so I was telling Nate, like, you know, we were talking about it, we we're like, if we can buy this place and that place and this place, like this little circle of rentals right here is what's like making this area really shitty, essentially. Yeah, all the house, the houses around are actually pretty nice. Um, yeah, the guy that called us that actually had a really nice you house right there. Tell like our seven unit is right here, right? And like if you look at this house, there's actually like really nice big, um, big homes. You know, older homes, but they're like mostly like these streets down here. There's some like beautiful houses down here. You know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> So the, our biggest hurdle is figuring out which tenants are actually bad and which tenants <laughs> just have like a feud with, you know, everyone. Um, Cause everyone, it's pretty much like half of the building. Like there's a unit in the middle of the building on the ground floor and they pretty much keep themselves and they're good. But the left and the right side of the building, they're in like this feud of, I don't even know what, um, like Nate was saying, the one guy that got knocked out a few times, he thinks he's like the private security that is hired, <laughs> like the boss man. So he just like goes around every single time he got in a fight. It was due to the fact that someone parked that was coming to visit one of the tenants and it could be, a we thought there was like drug activity going on, but we don't have no way to prove it. And I don't think he did either. He was just being like, you don't live here. You need to get out. And you know, one thing led to another and um, he ended up, um, you know, there ended up being a fight. So what we've been telling the tenants, since we have no way of telling what the hell is going on and who's telling us the truth is we just tell them every single time something happens, I, we told them like both sides. Text us, tell us what happened so we can see both sides of the story and fill out a police report. And based off of that, we'll be able to hopefully eventually tell what is actually happening in this place <laughs> um, to yeah. be able to like rectify it, right? So um, this is kind of like a street view. You can see it's got a pretty pretty decent sized big garage. Um, but the plan is basically over say like the next six months to cycle out say like two to three of these tenants and we think it'll quiet the building down a lot um and then we'll get better rents on the three we you know turn and um but first we got to figure out like Theo was saying who's doing what i guess because that's see that's like the the biggest issue with with tenants right because all the tenants in there essentially are bad tenants because they're putting up with what's going on there right um so for us to just get you know take out two or three of the tenants that we think are bad and throw good tenants in there as soon as those good tenants go in there and we didn't take out the actual bad tenants those good tenants are just going to leave right because they're like i'm not paying yeah. 50 to be in this you know jerry springer you know <laughs> special um so that's 
the, the kind of issue um, you uh, <laughs> you run into. Um, anyone? Yeah, I think like, uh, yeah, nobody like uh, wants to, there's two kind of people right now that I'm seeing. One's like got nothing to do, so they're basically fighting. And the other's like, I have so much to do and I have, I have, I got to find ways to keep my home running, but they don't even care. I think, I think you got a mix of both, like probably a bunch of people who just want to fight and then a bunch of people who are like too busy with handling their stuff and getting their life together because it's like so close to falling apart and they're kind of responsible, I guess, yeah. but they don't want to even like uh, mess with anybody else. So they're like, let's get in and get out at 7 a.m. in the morning, come back at 11 p.m., just crash in there like a motel or something, you know, <laughs> and let's see if we can get our life straight. Yeah, yeah and you can tell our, that that's like what our rents are. They're super duper low. It's insane. That... But but the units are also pretty small, right? So is is one one point two five dollars a unit, right? Like it's a square foot finished is four hundred square foot, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that any of the units are actually three hundred and fifty square feet. That that that's, doesn't seem right. That, yeah, that does. I I think so. So I think the agent just threw some of that. They're not like huge units, but they're not like abnormally tiny either um i would say they're probably the same size as like the the six unit or close yeah. to it's just their different layout yeah um mm -hmm. because like we they all have like an actual bedroom an actual kitchen a bathroom a living, like a living room mm -hmm. yeah um so it's just the I, yeah, I don't think that those that square footage is is correct because I I don't know if it has a square footage number for the actual building. Um, yeah, so it says it's three thousand, which I don't. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, unless it's yeah, but but yeah, I mean, it's a uh, yeah, it definitely should be for more. Um, they're just like the big. He's got a a screwy setup over there, so. That's that's what we got to work on there. <laughs> so so it's like the opposite of uh, not the opposite, but where like um, Brandon was redoing his whole three unit physically, we're more like trying to redo our tenant makeup, basically, um, which is kind of complicated. Yep. I'm problems, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I actually don't mind the physical ones. You like yeah. You at least know what you're dealing with. This one, we got some question marks right now, but it's still early. So, the one guy, the one guy, um, <laughs> Nate. Nate's usually like talk to him. So like I was down there doing some stuff today, and Nate's like, "Yeah, just you know, go there." He said he's got his rent. So I was like, "Okay." So I like knock on the door, and the dude like swings the door open. Literally swings the door open, walks back. And like looks at me like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> well, hi, my name's Tio. I'm the landlord. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a character. <laughs> that's I think that's the guy that got knocked out a few times. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Definitely. So you guys plan to manage these properties by yourself or have like third property third party property management? Our property management company does all that. Um, okay all the managing for us. Um, I don't think I would ever trust. I think if I gave this to a property management company, they would probably cry and freak out and not know what to do. Yeah, it would be crazy, I think. They, they, they would be probably super overwhelmed. They, I don't even think they'd know where to start unless they're used to dealing with this sort of thing, you know? Um, mm -hmm which I, most property managers, I don't think are used to dealing with this. They're used to like collecting rent, maybe kicking people out every now and then and dealing with like one tenant issue. Um, but I think with um, <laughs> the amount of tenant issues that there are here, I think they would just be like blown away. They'd be like, yeah, we're done. We're, we're all set. <laughs> I, th I think the main issue, like I said, is that guy, so he owned it for 13 years and like he placed everyone in, and I, he definitely didn't place the best tenants at all. 
But I think some of the people might be okay, but I think he just let them all get away with so much the whole time. So, like, the one lady, she I guess now she just walks out of her door and just screams at the top of her lungs at the apartment building across the street, which she can't even see because she can't see. You know, so there's just stuff like that. Um, and I think he just let it go on, like, unchecked for a long time. Yep. And that's... Uh... Right, that you're either buying someone's problem because it's like mismanaged, and I mean, it's got new siding, it's got newer roofs. It's, it's yeah, he actually's like updated it's, some of the interiors. Um, the garage actually looks a lot better than it does in this picture. Yeah, um, I think it's sided, right? I, well, I think, and if it's not, he definitely repainted it. It doesn't yeah. look like that, and it has a new roof because this one has like half of a new roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the whole thing actually looks decent in person. Yeah. Um, so I think the other issue stems from these guys in their backyard. They have like a picnic table, which it just invites all the ridiculousness to linger, you know? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to try to do is obviously get a hold of these guys and be like, hey, I think we can both agree that we have some tenant issues on both sides and let's, uh, you know, figure something out here. <laughs> um, so we, we actually have this guy's number. Ideally, what we're going to try to do is just try to buy it. Um, and that way, that'll actually make sure that we can actually fix the tenant issue because we'll be in charge of the tenant issue, right? And uh, same thing with this place too. So um, that's, our, that's our master plan. <laughs> I don't know if how many units. I think this was a three unit over here. Um, yeah. I don't know how big this building is. I'm guessing it's a decent it's a, size, probably like six, five, maybe. Yeah, I forget. Like somewhere between four and six. That guy told us. Yeah. So, yeah, I think like this guy hangs out his window. Oh, uh, uh, yep. This guy hangs out his window and screams. And our tenant hangs out of this window and screams. And uh, apparently, they just have the most colorful language <laughs> and say the craziest things where the guy was like, I can't even tell you what they were saying. I was like, dang, like we got three adults here and you can't even tell us what, what was going on. So yeah, the, the, the guy Tio's talking about is like a, a neighbor, like you said, like behind the building across the street. And he said his sister and his like nieces and nephews won't, like his, his sister won't even let his nieces and nephews come over because of the things these people say. And they're like so loud, um, which is crazy. Oh, yeah. So yeah, something we're gonna fix. Yeah, like literally he said he's in his house and he can hear him screaming. So yeah, with the door man, shut. With the with door him. shut. And he's a few houses away from them, right? Yeah. So. Um, and on a different street, <laughs> literally yeah. goes around the block. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, so, but. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, sometimes you buy, you know, like I was saying, problems to fix, like actual structural, like, you know, Brandon's doing, and sometimes you uh, buy problems to fix with just tenant, tenants, and I guess we can argue which one's uh, a better issue to fix, you know, this yeah. one probably takes a little less money, but a lot less, a lot more headache. Whereas, you know, um, the other one takes a little bit more money and maybe less headaches, depending on your contractor, right? So, um, yeah, this one definitely is like a lesson on like how you can screw up an investment. Cause in reality, this thing should be like 60,000 more than what he sold it for, roughly. And nothing, like he did everything right except for his tenant screening and like tenant relations, basically. Everything else, he actually did like pretty good. You know, like uh, most like his, his renovations, like everything else he, is good. He sounds like he fixed stuff as it came up, but he's just awful at the other end of it. So. Yeah, so our goal, like kind of, I think Nate kind of talked about it. We're going to try to get rid of our problem tenants over here and then um, get a, do a cash out refi and get our cash back. Um, and then we have an investor on it too. So hopefully we'll be able to return all capital and then just keep, keep having a cash flow.
Um, does anyone else have any other questions on either either wonderful building? <laughs> Anybody working on anything different? Besides, I mean, like Brandon told us about his. Freddie, you got anything? No, you're on mute, I think. All right, now you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm actually finalizing um, among other things, but mostly what I just finalizing today, uh, a house in Mount Clement. It's actually a two house somehow. It's a house with another house in the back. If yeah. that makes some sense, but I found it like that. So it has like a guest house in the back for like one bedroom and a bathroom and a small kitchen. Um, so I just uh, finished, like I'm redoing the whole thing. The bigger house, the, the main house, which is huge, didn't need much. It's like the guy just couldn't uh, pay his mortgage. So he just trying to get out. Uh, I took it on what I think is a good deal. We'll see. I repainted the whole thing uh, with a more modern color. And um, the little house in the back, he abandoned that like years ago, I can tell. Uh, but then I just went and redid the whole thing, floor, everything in, in the little house. So now it does look like really it's a nice uh, house with a ni very nice guest house now. Uh, we're going to try to sell it. We have... I work with my one of my brothers and then a couple that are business partners with me, uh, and then we do sell a lot on the on the international market. Uh, we sell a lot of mostly everything we sell. We sell it uh, to folks that are um, uh, overseas, like Argentina or Chile. Uh, they're out crazy buying everything. They started out in Detroit, but now they're branching out. We're taking them out to Metro Detroit because uh, Detroit is kind of getting wild. <laughs> so I've been um, I've been dealing with Detroit for many years, and now I think it's getting to a point where it's getting a little wild. So we're taking these folks out to Metro Detroit. The prices are a little bit higher, but I think uh, on the long term it's gonna be worth it for them. So the uh, we're gonna try to this house we're gonna try to sell it either to those folks or we're gonna also. The next few days we're gonna put it on the local market too to see if we can just sell it faster and you know sell it. The only thing about when we sell something on the international market is that we somehow are always attached because these folks are never here. They just send their money and we cannot. Even though we put a pro we pro put a property management company in place, but they still call us when something is needed, right? Um, it's like that little trusting thing that they always had to be checking on, calling us for anything that it's needed, even though they have a property management company that we also find, you know, connect them to. What are you using uh, so, for property management? Huh? What are you using for the property management? Right now, um, Mount Clement is, uh, uh, I, I forgot the name, it's like Key something. Um, I haven't started because we just finished the house with them. But here in in the Troy and rest of Metro Detroit, we have IRK. They are in Warren. Uh, they're doing a good job so far for us. Um, they are on the off, right off Tuner. So that's what they've been using. And then, uh, yeah, that's what they use right now. We had a couple other before we kind of been, you know, property management is really rough. So we've been switching back and forth. And uh, uh, this, we found this one on the beginning of the year and then so far they're doing good. But they don't do Mount Clement, they told me. So it's a little far for them. So we had to go and find, they connected me to this other uh, uh, company, Mount Clement. There's actually two companies that I'm talking to. Um, well, I was yeah. just throwing it out there because we have a property management company. So if uh, you do. Heard. Yeah, if you ever struggle with anything, let us know. Maybe we can help you out. Okay, definitely. I definitely want to call you because we're always trying to reach out for property management. For yeah, sure. Like you know. And uh, yeah, so that's all we got. We have other houses that we're doing uh, that we've been uh, selling to international folks. Uh, I just closed, sold two houses last week. 
I'm selling on I'm selling another one tomorrow. But they are in uh shoot, yeah, they Detroit. I'm buying one in, in Oak Park. Uh I already put an offer and got accepted, so we're waiting on the closing for Oak Park. That one, like very honestly, uh we just put it for sixty grand and we just sold that house for hundred and five. That's awesome. And like we probably just gonna have to paint the kitchen cabinets. That's the only thing the house needs. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, but you know, so that's kind of what I really want to get into uh, apartment buildings. So I'm gonna be calling you guys more often now. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna get a few of those. So as I'm doing everything else, you know, the cash flow is always good, I, even though they come with a headache all the time. <laughs> yep. They usually come, but hopefully you can fix the headache and then you don't got to worry about the headache and just worry about the cash flow. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I think I was thinking when you started talking about how, you know, you have bad tenants, I was thinking, I think the best thing is to get rid of them as soon as possible. So you build no type of relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree. Just clean house, start over. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, see if you can, if you guys can find those other uh, two places and buy them, then you can clean really the, the whole area. Everything goes up drastically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. So, so that's are you what... working on anything? Uh, yeah, I was looking for a 10 unit in Rom uh, Romulus. I'm still trying to get it going. Um, we're still having some, we're not able to agree on the price. Um, so I'm working with um, another agent. His name is Devon Jackson. He runs the Metro Detroit a commercial real estate group. So I'm trying to see if I can get that one going. And then um, I'm looking at another six unit in Detroit. Um, I'm interested in it, but it's overpriced. So. I'm trying to get some help, trying reaching out to different people in Detroit that I know uh, to see if they can help me out. And once I get some traction, I'll let you guys know. Sweet, man. Sounds good. I just invested passively in a deal too, a 67 unit. So I think that one's going to be closing. Uh, in, in Michigan? Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, you got a 67 unit? No, I invested passively in it. Okay. Um, so just uh, who's the uh, host? Barry. And oh, okay. Sterling. Wow, Josh Sterling and Barry Flavin, those guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yep. So I'm for that one. That's uh, it's in Shelby Township, so should be a really sweet deal. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Larry Mason. Mm hmm. He, I was just talking today uh, with him, and he was telling me he got some uh, one apartment unit for uh, apartment building for sale on Burner. If anybody's interested in buying in that's Mexican town, but he told me it needs a lot of work. So it's a, it's a, you know a project. It's gonna be a lot of work. I didn't ask for details because I'm too busy with everything else. I don't want to get into something that needs a lot of work. But yeah. if anybody's interested, either reach out to him mm -hmm. or if you don't know Larry, let me know and I'll, I'll connect you. Yeah, which sorry. area? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Larry it needs a lot of work but with your. Huh? Which area? Uh, on Werner Street. That's in Mexican Town. That's the heart. The Detroit. Of... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if somebody's looking to invest passively, mm -hmm. uh, like what's a decent number that you're looking at before it's worth getting somebody involved? You're saying like you as like how much you return you should get on your money or? Like let's say I wanted to invest passively in a deal. What number would I have to bring before anybody would – Oh, like the minimum investment amount? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Before it's worth yeah. bringing on board. Yeah. 50 grand, most people, is like what their limit is. Once in a while, you'll see a 25, but usually 50 and up. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. That depends on the deal and who is yeah. putting it together and how much money you need to raise and it depends on a bunch of stuff. A lot of guys that maybe are newer will take twenty five because they don't have like as many connections because for them it's way easier to just sell, you know. Right. I've seen a couple of different deal. people looking on you know, on the different pages, you know, looking for smaller amounts like thirty, forty grand, but I wasn't I wasn't sure if there was like a, a basic base number. I think a lot of those people were probably looking for more like a fix and flip. Yeah. Money. Yeah. So like stuff like that. Every time I've seen people asking for it, it's a lot of people that have like ran out of their hard money and they're trying to get someone to bring in like 30 to 40 K on a second mortgage. Uh, so it's like super not safe. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So yeah, every time I've come across, it's usually something along those lines. And to me, it just worries me because if they mismanage their like hard money loan and their first mortgage lien position sort of people, um, they're trying to bring in more money to probably <laughs> have an issue that's maybe not fixable by money. It's maybe they're, they're the issue, right? <laughs> it's kind of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, um, poor management of, of their funds. Contractors, funds, uh, spending money on, you know, whatever it may be, you know. But, yeah, so I, I would just be weary. Um, I would invest, like, passively with, like, um, either, like, an apartment building. Because um, that way, like, all the guys that invested passively with us, we just had, like, one guy on each building. And, um, it's just, we bought it under an LLC. We had an operating agreement and we had a lawyer draft up that operating agreement. And it pretty much just says that like me and Nate are like the controlling partners. They're the non-controlling partner. And then it kind of divvies out all the, how the split is and the returns and what happens if whatever happens and, you know, kind of goes over all that stuff and you're kind of, you know, it's a little safer than, uh, <laughs> Right. Second position on a, on a mortgage, you know? I get you. Yeah. Um, hey, Brandon, I wanted to ask you, and, and I, you might have mentioned it, but what do you, how long, uh, obviously your timeline got screwed up. But like originally, how long were you thinking it would take to get done? And then like now, what are you thinking with all that? Because now you're talking like probably triple the work, basically. Yeah, so now we have like triple the work. Before we had some contractors line up that I thought was going to be able to handle the entire project. So we were guessing about three months total um, from the time we started demo to the time it was all wrapped up. But now we're looking um, maybe like once we get the contractors in, it's going to start moving along pretty quick because those places are pretty small. So still I'm thinking maybe once we get it, like four, four and a half months maybe. So sometime after the beginning of the year. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the, the craziest part about all this is, is like contractor part. Yeah, it's just because, you know, the foundation part, that's a little irregular. Um, the same with like the exterior walls, a little irregular, you know? Yeah. So. Um, yeah. It's like the hardest industry. I, I, it's like the only industry I've ever ran into that's like not organized is like contractors. Oh, if you're a contractor, all you have to do is show up and do what you said and you'll, you'll make yeah. money, you know what I mean? Yeah, you That's could even hard. do like a semi, you could just be like decent work yeah. and people would love you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. But That's then funny. me and John keep getting shipped around the country, so like we keep getting pulled. So that's not helping us either, you know what I mean? Yes. So it's just you guys consider hiring people? Um, Like hiring like a... Like your own, just... They work for you and that's all they do? Um, I, you know, I would I would if we had more volume or more projects going on. Hopefully, you know, we're looking to, to ramp it up a little bit next year. Um, but right now, we, we just don't have the work for them, you know. So, and I would hate to, like, play around with someone like that, like, work this week but not next week. So, I'd want it to be, like, pretty consistent, you know, treat them well. Yeah. If you guys, if your guys ever get bored, let me know. We we'll get some work for them. All right. 
Like Freddie, real quick, what uh for for your rehab, what do you do? You you have like subcontractors you throw in there? Or? Yeah, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't do much of the physical work on it. Mm -hmm. I do have uh, sub uh, contractors. Uh, I have about four different teams, people that have been working with me for years and uh, some folks, um, some new ones too that comes along the way. You know, I'm getting a wave of folks that are coming from uh, Miami just to work here uh, because they're here. I mean, contracting here is, is, is the craziest thing that you just don't know what's going on. So there are actually people coming from Miami. This cause, this I have right now about four or five Colombian guys that are here uh, just because they hear that there's work here. So they're um, having them do a lot of different things. And there's a couple guys from that just came from New York, Dominicans uh, from Dominican Republic, from New York. And um, so I have, aside from those, I have two other groups that will always work together. One is led by a Colombian guy. And then another one is led by, uh, shoot, I, I think he's Mexican or Salvadorian. So I have a few groups, and there's always one or the other that's available to yeah. do things. However, still, sometimes I can get anybody for a week, you know, but once I grab them, uh, I keep them for, uh, you know, as long as I need them. Yeah, I got you. That's right. Yeah, um, I, was, I have been considering... Uh, bringing folks from Miami, uh, like two of these guys that I was telling you about, I am considering keeping them like just working for me uh, and pay, pay them monthly if they agree to do it uh, as well. Or bringing some folks from Miami or even from Argentina, bringing some folks just to live there here and work uh, for us. Because uh, contractors are really hard these days. If you have people um, that you know that would be willing to, and you can spare them. Um, I know me and Nate could probably use one or two guys. Um, so. Okay, I'll definitely talk to them. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, because yeah, we're always looking for guys. We actually just found a guy that's starting tomorrow, so hopefully he work. He'll work out cool. Um, just don't hold me accountable for you know whatever they do, right? Because oh yeah, no, for sure, yeah. <laughs> they sometimes they even work good for me, and then a month later I have to let them go because they're crazy. So yeah, uh, and, and sometimes they try to overcharge because they know what we need, you know. Yeah, you've got it. Always play that game. Don't worry about me if I send you somebody, and I sending you my brother. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why we try to like all the guys that work for us. We try to just. Be like, all right, you're just tired and you're working for us and only for us, right? Just so that way, you know, to me, it it's like a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, right? It's a good thing because we have workers that are always working, but it's a bad thing that we always need to find more stuff. But that's also a good thing, right? Because it like that's pushes us to find yeah. more stuff, right? Finding business. Um, so that's kind of like when we started hiring guys, we're like, okay now we need more houses so we got more houses and now we got more houses and we're like shit we need more guys and now we got more guys and we're like all right we need even more houses so now we're gonna get hopefully even more houses and then be like fuck we need like even more guys so like, hopefully it just keeps like you know growing on that trajectory that's a good thing yeah and if you're feeling you're getting um really really desperate let me know I mean, I'm going to try to talk to the guys now to see if they can just come around, send them to you. But um, again, I have been considering uh, going to my, I, I, I have a, I own a house in Miami too, and I go there often. So going to Miami and trying to bring some guys that if they want to stay and work for, uh, you know, if, if it's even for, if it's for a few months that we can accommodate them, you know, or you yeah. can accommodate and have them working for you. Yeah. yeah. No, that'd be sweet. Let me know when you go to Miami, I'll come with you. It sounds like yeah. a great, great thing to do. Go to Miami, try to find some workers, come back. That's like the best work trip ever. <laughs> yeah. cool right off. <laughs> yeah. I used to go there like every three or four months. Now this year I haven't been there because of the virus, but I used to yeah. be there all the time. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of guys that like worked in the industry, like 
down in Miami with like the travel industry that are probably like out of work and they don't really have a lot to do yeah. down there, right? They're slow um, right now. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's how we got lucky with a bunch of our guys, right? They got laid off by whatever job they were doing and you know, we ended up you know, Yeah, I think like three or four of them basically. Yeah. yeah. Maybe then even the, the guy today. Yeah, I think Mark yeah. he might be a little similar though. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Blessing in the skies. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I have been getting a lot of people um here and there, but the the this is weird because every time you think you get a let's say a Latino guy, not to say a Mexican guy just because they come from um, but then you think they'll be, they'll tell you they know everything. So, and I'll be like, Hey, let's do it. And then just to find out they really are limited to what they really can be good at. Right. Uh, so many of them are really good at many things, but some will tell you that they are, but you have to test them every single one. You have to test them now. Yeah. And see if really as good as they, they, they're saying. Yeah. That, that, I think that's the hardest part is figuring out like once you start get a, getting a few guys, is figuring out what they're actually good at. Cause a lot of people are good at a lot of things, but some people are like good at stuff and fast, but good at stuff and slow. Right. So you got to figure out what they're good and fast at and have those guys work on those things. And then maybe another guy's like, you know, they're like the opposite with the good and fast thing. Right. So you got to like figure out how to do that. So you're not like really wasting time, you know, you just have the guy do what he's best at and right. have focus on that but it, it takes time and it's like annoying right because you got to like figure it out for almost like every guy and then be like okay this guy's good at this this and this we're gonna have him do this this and this because he's good and fast at it or just good at it right right i just lost my best guy that he was always with me but i mean i help him <laughs> myself to buy his own uh excavator like the book up He's now making fifteen hundred dollars, uh, fifteen hundred dollars a month, uh, a day, doing yeah. excavations. Like he, he say in just in Detroit, like he got two or three excavations a day. So he doesn't even do. He can do two or three. He do one or two, yeah. but he's is always busy. He used to be my my like my right hand man, but you know I'm not gonna make the guy uh, not progress. You know he was. Yeah. He, I know he was good at that. I help him out to buy his own machine and now the guy just making he said between eight hundred and fifteen hundred dollars every day he makes. So That's yeah. So he was my go to guy for everything. He was with me twenty four seven. Uh but he gotta make his own big money too, you know. Yeah for sure. Absolutely. Cool. You got anything else Nate? Anyone else got any questions? No, that's it. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Brandon. Oh, I am Freddy and anyone else that shared too. Yeah. No problem, dude. And uh Theo, thank you for send uh giving me uh Joe's number. Joe's a good guy. Did he hook you up? Yeah. He did the front of the next excellent job at the uh, at well at the guest house that uh, that I was telling you about in Mount Clement. So it was an excellent job. Yeah, I see I've been trying to start an HVAC company. Um just because <laughs> literally there's like so much hvac that we like um our guys not that they're like our guys but like guys that we know like we like push out um i just wanted to have an hvac company for the longest time just because it'd be sweet with the property management and everything else so i'm like man it's big money too it is big money for sure it's real good money all that stuff hvac electrical plumbing excavating yeah, that's I know, but I see the excavation thing. Uh, it's a little tricky, though. Yeah, it is. Gas lines and all that stuff. So yeah, but he's yeah. he's been doing it for many years, so he's good yeah. at that. Everything you can tie in with property management, right? You can all make it like one huge big company that feeds off of itself. So yeah, but good. I'm I'm glad you worked out. Joe's a good guy. He is. It's good. Cool. All right. Well, I All guess right. we'll wrap it up. If anyone else has anything else. All right. Take it easy. All right. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you. All right. Yeah. Bye. Have a good night.